have to do that but if you want if you want a really clean stone then that's your best bet but after you've let it ferment with the gold see now you may need to assist it with with keeping it on a sand bath or a, like over a, some kind of a heat source that that lets it break down the gold now it will dissolve the gold eventually and when it does you're going to gradually see a you're going to gradually see a yellow color a yellow and kind of amber color appear in the in the mass now you want to then put it in a container where the vapors can go up and rain back down and up and rain back down we're basically mimicking nature's water cycle uh, so that way you are your substance rises to the above and gains power and potential from the above and brings it and brings it to unite with the below and that which is in the below so that that which is below and that that which is above are being their forces are being met together where heaven meets earth so to speak uh, now so every time that the oil and the water vapor goes up and flows back down what happens is there's a buildup of kinetic energy or, or potential energy that forms in the top of the glass and that potential energy uh, of that of the droplets that energy drops back down into the earth and the earth absorbs that energy and it keeps absorbing more energy over and over again which is being supplied to it by the heat of the fire and by the activity of gravity the effect of gravity causing it to rain back down after it's cooled at the top now you may need to let it continue doing that over and over and over again now most alchemical texts say that you need to hermetically seal the vessel in other words to remove the remove the air out of it and keep it sealed tight so it's airtight but in my experience this is not a necessity it's not it's not it's not detriment as well as much as they claim um, in fact I personally think that it's better that you let you let the, the material breathe and what you want to do is let the water vapors escape oh, gradually over time and while the oil is slowly going up and down up and down until eventually it becomes one with the substance below and it there's a now you have the red stone which is the male and female unified into one salt body you got your sulfur and your mercury philosophical sulfur and mercury united into one body uh, of salt in the in the container now um, if you try to rush this work though I, I've, I've trust me I've tried it I've tried it I've made stones that I was able to produce in like three weeks and they were so weak they weren't they weren't yielding hardly anything I've made stones that I spent three months on nine months on um, the longer I spent time refining the stone the better yield that came out from it I, I can in, I can honestly say that I have a 5.3 gram piece of gold that used to be lead at one point in time and it is no longer lead but the red stone I used on that metal, that stone I developed for shit, sometime between the end of 2019 or beginning of 2020. No, so the beginning of 2019, sometime in the middle of 2019 to 2020. I spent like I spent like almost a year on on one of these samples of red, pow red powder that I was able to get gold from, um, and. It came out to be about three hundred dollars worth of gold, but it was literally a year's worth of attention and labor. You're not gonna like. Maybe it's like the philosophers used to say, like this stone cannot fall into the wrong hands. It cannot fall into corrupt and greedy hands. If you're greedy and 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 you're after the stone for riches and fame and fortune, you won't find it. You won't you won't attain it because you won't exercise the patience and the, the the amount of care that you've got to put into your work um, now uh, after you've got this 
red stone. I mean, it'll 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 eventually like gain a, a color of like rusty red, uh, and then like if you continue further, it'll look like cinnabar, crimson cinnabar, and it, and if if you continue dissolving and coagulating it over and over, you'll eventually get a almost almost a violet like hue to it when it's when it's raised into the light, um, but. Uh, the best thing that you can do is sit back and watch, but pay mind to to your substance and make sure your temperatures aren't too hot and your water's not boiling over and stuff. Because trust me, I've been there a thousand times. It happens if you're not if you're not paying close attention and if you're if you're too busy on other things and like this is not an easy work. It's an easy work. So it's like the alchemist says, it's the simplest thing that you can possibly achieve, and yet it's the hardest task of all tasks. It's the most, it's, it's the most difficult thing you can accomplish, and yet it's like child's play. All right. Well. Um. Now. A after you've got the red stone, uh, it can be in different stages of development, um, but. Once you have the red stone, you can actually coagulate it and let it dry like a like a piece of sedimentary rock, like or like clay. Uh, like it'll you can form it into clumps and let it dry out. And when it dries out completely devoid of water, you can subject it to extreme fire, extreme temperatures, and it will melt down into a glassy-like, ruby-like state, and it literally looks like a like a pure ruby. Or a, or like a, like a blood-colored jewel. It is, it is a bright red, beautiful crystal. Um, and when it's melted down like that, and it's indestructible to fire from that point on. The only thing that will destroy it is if it is consumed by, uh, as if it is consumed by molten metal, or if it is ingested by the human body and the hydrochloric acid in the body breaks it down uh, in your stomach um, but um, now both tink both stones can be made into tinctures uh, the white stone and the red stone can both be dissolved in liquor that is uh, cut with water um, I, I advise if you want to make uh, an elixir potion out of it to test on yourself uh, to see how great the medicinal properties of the stone actually are then get you about one-thirds liquor white preferably white liquor like white wine or something um, and you want to add your stone to that liquor and uh, you want to heat it up until it's simmering not quite boiling but simmering and add water to it and um, you might need to stir it around and make sure most of it dissolves. So it'll it'll it's partial it's partially soluble. It's I soluble I want to say, um, but it's it's easy to dissolve and coagulate it again and again. Um, I can testify that it does have some pretty profound medicinal properties. Um, I once I once ran my foot into a into a um, a lawnmower blade in in the backyard of a friend's house. Uh, and I split my toe wide open and I took a couple pinches of the white stone and I mixed it with some water and I ingested it and less than 72 hours later, less than three days, I reached down to scratch my foot where the, where I was cut and the scab falls off of my toe. I didn't even get a chance to like look at it. Um. I, I, it just was itching and I reached for it and the scab fell off and there was already scar tissue already like it healed completely in less than three days um, and that was the fastest I'd ever recovered from a injury like that and I mean I, I was bleeding for like 30 minutes straight a, after I cut my foot my foot on this lawnmower blade um, so it does appear to actually enhance your uh, body's healing capabilities um, and uh, it does make it easier to go longer without the need for eating or sleeping, and uh, it allows you to it allows you to go longer with with less, uh, and so that 
you can withstand um, the hunger and the tiredness without actually like um, you won't experience fatigue as soon you, you can go much longer if you if you ingest this material um, in a tincture form it will it'll make it easier for your body to uh, keep running on less fuel um, but uh, as far as like its ability to cure diseases and illnesses it it works pretty well um, but if you have any questions uh, about this work if you have any uh, any theories or ideas or if you have any recommendations that I should try any experiments I should try with the stone um, hit me up and uh, uh, I'm usually on Facebook message me um, and uh, let me know what you think and um, for those alchemists out there that are devoted to finding the truth about the philosopher's stone um, y'all keep at it I appreciate everything y'all do and um, I hope y'all keep on keep performing the great work thanks everybody